Uh, thanks for the talk today. I'm Koko Huang from National University uh, Research Faculty. And today I present to you my work, Scalable Continuous Time Diffusion Framework for Network Inference and Influence Estimation. This work is collaborated with Rizzo and Prof. Bogdan Zier and Prof. Xiao Kui. Uh, first, let's consider a continuous time diffusion cascade within a time frame T. And here we have a given graph. Let's suppose at time T0, node 0 is infected. And then it will start, and then it will start to influence, uh, influence its neighbors within time t, and the corresponding infection time will be recorded. But however, in real world, we do not have the exact knowledge of the graph structures. What we have is or it's, it's only the uh, infection time of each node, and stored as a cascade c. So in the literature, uh, based on the given cascade data, uh, it, it, the Diffusion modeling for network inference has been long, uh, long studied. <laughs> so the problem here is that to try to find a model, uh, modeling the diffusion, mo uh, diffu uh, diffu diffusion from the cascade data only for the network structure. Here, the network structure is represented as a, as a adjacent matrix. The element U V here is a parameter lambda U V turned at the diffusion rate. So the question here is that, how to establish the diffusion model M to infer the network structure from cascade data. And in the literature, most of the methods are probabilistic models, and I won't give the details here due to the time limitation. But uh, in, our, our ex, uh, in our experiment, we uh, found that such probabilistic models are not sufficient enough to scale to large real world data sets. So our approach here is that try to model the diffusion as a continuous time dynamic particle systems. Here is a here is an illustration of the diffusion on a graph, and now we come to uh, model it as a dynamic particle system. Uh, you need to pay attention that uh, the particle here is not the node in the graph, but the dynamic diffusion process. So for this uh, diffusion process, we use three notations to, to describe the system. First is the diffusion network G with node set V. Here we do not have the edge set E. And a state vector phi T. And a state transition function omega. So <clears throat> the diffusion process can be described as follows. Uh, from the state vector phi 0, the transition omega here was the trans uh, transition phi 0 to phi 1, phi 2, and so on and so forth. So we can note that uh, the uh, state transition function omega here is a key component. But before we reach to that part, we need uh, first we uh, talk about the diffusion uh, functions that defined on each edge based on the diffusion rate lambda u v. Here, give two nodes and the diffusion rate lambda u v. We assume that the diffusion function can be uh, modeled as exponential function because uh, exponential function had uh, widely used in in this diffusion uh, research and has been proved quite effective. Here is a corresponding PDF and CDF. And a given example uh, when we set lambda UV equals to two. Now we talk about the uh, continuous time, uh, conditional uh, real time diffusion rate, gamma, gamma T here. We have given a node V and four, is, and four of labors. And at time t prime, we have an observation that three of its neighbors are infected. But at time t prime, we observe that not we haven't been infected yet. Now let's let's consider the uh, infection process between node i and v. Here we define our survival function as one minus its PDL function. In this case, it would be this uh, it would be this uh, exponential function. Now here, I uh, try to calculate the probability that a node V survive from node I from time T I, but, but the condition on the observation S T prime. Here is the conditional probability formula. The numerator is the probability that node I survive from node V, uh, V survive from node I from time T I to T V. And the denominator is the probability that I, I survive from uh, T I to T prime. And finally, it give, it give us this uh, give, give us this uh, equation that it demonstrates that 
uh, this this the probability this equation probability is independent of the time t t i i is the starting infection time, but all depends on the time we observe. So that means that if we observe a time t i, the the infection probability will exactly the same as the probability start from t i. So based on based on this knowledge, we now consider that several neighbors infecting node V as simultaneously. And here we try to calculate the probability that node V survive from its three infected, infected labors. The probability is a time that it survived from its labors IKV. And we we reached the conclusion that at this at this, uh, at this moment the uh, conditional diffusion rate would be the sum of the diffusion rate of, it, of its infected labors. Now, we are ready to establish the state transition function omega. Here I have given the corresponding PDF, CDF, CDF and survival function based on we established the gamma t prime. Here we consider the uh, tra uh, state transition function phi t prime to phi t prime plus tau. Here tau is a uh, infinitesimal interval tau. And uh, this is a series of, of mathematical detection. I won't share the details here. Uh, if you're interested, you can refer to our papers. And the conclusion is that uh, this probability can be simply def uh, calculated as the tau times the uh, conditional diffusion rate gamma t prime. So given a, a, a state vector phi t and phi t plus tau, uh, the transition function can be simply expressed as the phi t plus tau, tau times the gamma t. And the uh, equation two is give the is is the uh, equation to see how cal how to calculate the gamma t. But however, uh, this uh, this framework is more of a uh, theoretical interest because we cannot uh, train our model use a uh, infinitesimal interval tau. So here we relax the tau here to an uh, uh, interval epsilon. So the equation one and equation two would be relaxed to equation three and four. So and um, here would be and um, based on this uh, framework, we propose our framework of diffusion diffusion approximation uh, short short for FIM. And the corresponding error here we express as the C T epsilon. And it is a function of both gamma T and epsilon. How now I demonstrate you what how, how the network inference is uh, done based on uh, use our framework theme. Here we give a bunch of cascade C and then we uh, in, in initialize the adjacent matrix A0 and phi 0. Phi 0 here is the node that infected at time 0. That would be the source load. So if I, our, our framework thing would calculate the phi 1 based on A0 and phi 0. And then we calculate the corresponding nodes and then SGD would update the A0 to A1. And then based on A1 and phi 1, we can calculate phi 2 and so on and so forth until the training is done. And after it's done, we will return the estimated A. Here we would pre, uh, predefined an S indicator lambda star, such that if the estimated element AUV, if, if uh, looks smaller than lambda star, it will predict an, the existence of an edge. And for influence estimation, it says to give a bunch of uh, Give the inferred that works and the source nodes. It, 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 uh, it aims to uh, derive the corresponding cascade and calculate the size and the expectation. Here we propose the shortest, uh, shortest diffusion time of set short for STDS for, for the sampling technique. Here give an example of the source node V0, V1 and time window T. In the first place, we we assume the diffusion starts at V0 and set the time between V0 and V1 as 0 seconds. And the estimation procedure would be as follows. First, we sample the diffusion time for each edge based on the edge diffusion function. And then we will, uh, we will then try to uh, calculate the node that can, uh, is reaching from 
node 0 within 10 seconds, that would be the set of STDS. And we will repeat this uh, process sufficient times until we get the exact uh, estimation, until we get an uh, uh, accurate estimation. Now let's go to uh, experiment part. Our experiment is done on uh, one existing synthetic, uh, one existing synthetic data set and three synthetic data set and three real world data set. Here is the number of loads and number of cascades. Here we only the cascade data is that is what we have only what we uh, only have here. And for base nine, we compare net rate for network inference and counting as for inference estimation, and for NMF for both the experiments. Here I demonstrate the uh, result of network inference. We compare our method with uh, NMF and net rate for the uh, binary cross entropy loss. We can see that our method can achieve consistent smaller uh, BC loss than the other two baseline. And also for table six, our method is only one that can uh, handle the two real world like they said, Weibo and Twitter here. And for network inference, uh, for the efficiency, we can know that our method is almost four to one magnitude, one magnitude faster than the baseline. And for inference estimation, we compare our method with uh, two baseline in terms of the mean absolute error. It shows that uh, our method is uh, consi uh, two consistent smaller MAE error, MAE error than the baseline. And also it runs uh, nearly one magnitude, one magnitude faster than the baseline. And that's a take home message that we utilize the continuous time dynamic system to model the continuous time diffusion process and, and propose the theme framework. And we develop the efficient sampling technique, STDS, for the inference estimation. And our method scales to large real world data sets. That's all. Thank you.